Let's see what watching a trailer for 30 straight minutes, remembering everything about games you've played over the last 30 years of your life, and reading a wiki about movies you will never ever fucking watch as I try to break down this Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite trailer. <laughs> because let's just say this before I hit play on this damn trailer and try to tell you what the fuck is going on. <laughs> this shit is nuts! This shit is nuts! I'm like... I am excited, so I'm going to quit the bullshit. I'm finna hit play on this trailer, dog, and we are going to try to break this down, man. I'm, I'm gonna try my damnness to try to show you what's going on here, so I'm gonna let the little intro play, let it do all that. It's Mega Man Action Ryu, and on the other side, Carol Danvers and Tony Stark. Stop! This right here. At this point in the trailer, we see X do a we see X do a combo and then he tags in Ryu. This is very reminiscent of the quick switch mechanic that was supposed to be in Marvel 3 but got left on the cutting room floor. They're all if you go to the cutting room floor, because that's why I mentioned it because I needed to remember that, there are there are there are like codes and ways to hack that back into the PS3 version. So you can see how that works. The thing is, with our first little piece of, I read this on a wiki trying to make sense of how this game, you know, flows into Marvel shit, is that one of the stones that you will not be allowed to use as a playable character is the Space Stone. Because the Space Stone is represented by this quick switch mechanic, which is prevalent all throughout the trailer because if you notice, Anytime someone uses the quick switch mechanic, they glow blue. Guess what color the space stone is? See? Making sense of this already. I guess I can continue now. Up and Here's the thing. Stop again. There were two switches, a launcher, and then a super. There is no way, even with this being linked to the Space Stone, there's no way that they don't cost meter. Whether that's a full meter, because that would make sense because that's how much variable air rate cost in Tatsunoka. And if you don't know what a variable air rate is, is that during an air combo, you can quest, uh, it's what, quarter circle forward, and the partner button does a variable air rate, and what it does is that it tags in the other character. Great for one of my teams with being my boo Jun and of course Zero, but we'll get more into that later. So back to the trailer now. Iron Man with this combo. What you see, so and stop again. The combo we just went past was that combo that Miss Marvel did into that command grab, into that command grab, into that wall splat, and then she went down. It looks like these these quick switches which are represented by the space stone which may or may not actually be versions of the variable air rate or whatever the hell they're calling this mechanic but it seems that characters may possibly be slightly invincible during these quick switch tags it may be very possible because that may be what the aura around them represents their invincibility time after using a mechanic like that. So again, as I would say, and I will continue to say this because it's what I believe at the moment, is this is something that has to cost meter. So, we're going to go back and someone's going to feel the full power of a full inhibitor. And wow, I, I'd show you this picture, but I'm too lazy, but... That, that's quite that's quite a, a ball sack there, Tony. Continue, please. On to... There's the thing. This combo with Ryu that I just stopped on is that... This combo was done in the middle of a tag even though you don't see it because Ryu was going blue like the Space Stone. We already talked about that with this new quick switch mechanic which we yet not know the name of. Back to the Shin Shoryuken, please. Kang! Miss Marvel. Just like 
in Tatsunoko versus Capcom, just like in Tatsunoko versus Capcom, you can do a level one and then press the partner button, and then you can expend it and do a level three. So, back to the trailer. That's the next Proton Cannon. Here's your use of the Infinity Stone. Ryu uses the power of Infinity Stone. Now, for what it looks like, at least in this early gameplay, is that even though he does activate a mid combo as you would like a V trigger currently in Street Fighter V, is that it's already glowing purple. So that must mean that possibly that gems are active that gem I'm gonna keep I'm gonna call them gems because it's like I'm just so used to Marvel superheroes is that stones may be possible to be picked up but then once they're activated you can activate them once in a combo or either or either you can keep expending it but it's like it seems that the combos work like Baroque when you activate an Infinity Stone because that's the thing that makes sense. Whether or not activation and the powers in using them are related to Red Life as, the, as Baroque was in Tatsunoko vs. Capcom is unknown at the moment. But it does seem that you do get a that you do get a free that you do get a free mid combo cancel off of the activation of an Infinity Stone. Ryu, you can finish your combo now. One, two, three. Still got that Hadouken though. Let's stop it right here. Miss Danvers is about to use the Time Infinity Stone. The thing is, is that I'm not sure if stones work the way they did in Marvel Super Heroes. Because in Marvel Super Heroes, you couldn't like do a combo and then activate a gem and then continue the combo. You had to you activated gems in neutral. That you were in neutral and then you can do cause what was it? Quarter circle back two punches is what activated an affinity gem in Marvel Superheroes. What the command is in this game, I don't know. Hell Given the way that Capcom makes fighters and shit, it may just be a damn button just to make it easier for people to deal with. Like, yo, there's a there's an Infinity Stone button, press it. So, um, Miss Danvers, um, your combo, please. Uh, one, two, three, super. Stop. I don't know. Well, actually, I probably do and probably can make this assumption. Is that... Carol did a teleport. And, you know, her being Ms. her being Captain Marvel, she can probably teleport on her own. And that may be a... That may be a movement trait of hers. The question that I do have, and the only question... Actually, I have questions at this point because the trailer is pretty much over. So you know what? Before I answer my questions, I might as well let I might as well let Carol finish our combo. Go ahead, girl. Shoot him with that beam. And now the trailer is over. So now here are the questions that I have. How are stones activated? Not sure. Not sure at all. Do not know. Do not know how stones are activated in any way. It's like because in that one scene where Ryu was already in a field full of purple aura, is that trying to figure out how stones work in this case is really hard because we don't have enough to go on. Because if you notice in the trailer, if you watch it back on your own time, is that Carol and Carol when she activates the time stone, is that is that it's green energy instead of the purple one Ryu activated the power the um the power infinity stone. But is that is it you pick up a stone and then it activates itself and then you get a free activation mid combo because if you remember how X Factor used to be like when the game was still when X Factor when Marvel 3 was still making the round before it came out, how X Factor like exponentially changed before we got to the final product, is that I guarantee that this won't be the same. It's like, I don't know if you really can have a game like Marvel Super Heroes where gems are controlled like that. So, I don't know if 
gems are a thing that you select at the character select screen because if it is, then that introduces a metagame aspect to matching teams with an affinity stone of your choice. With my assumption that space is off the table because I'm making the assumption that space is what allows characters in the game to do the quick switch mechanic, which we have no idea what it is, is that the other stones and what they could possibly do are unsure. So, the other major question I do have, because of the Tasunoko versus Capcom vibe that I'm getting, is does everybody have an air dash? Because that was a trait that all non-giant characters in, in Tasunoko versus Capcom had. Everybody had an air dash. Is that yeah? You would expect Mech, you would expect X to have an air dash because at some point in this video game he got a dash in the air. Cap Captain Marvel and Iron Man fly. Ryu didn't do one thing in the damn air, so it's unknown at the moment if air dashing is a universal mechanic. But given the nuts that this game is going, I really think that air dashing as a universal mechanic is a thing that makes sense. And it's something that should be used. And given that as well, is that the roster that they choose will have, but it's like, but we're talking about talking about for the Capcom, like Alex had a damn air dash in that game. So if they, you, that, I was sitting up here thinking like, well, you could make decisions on, now. Nah, you ain't got to make no decisions. Give everybody an air dash because this game is so nuts, you're probably going to want to do that. I'm feeling the game. It's just that simple. It's that, like I said earlier in the many and many of the videos I've put out in the past 24 hours, is that a reboot makes sense. A reboot makes sense given what, what where Marvel has come from, where Capcom wants to go, and revisiting where the Marvel Cinematic Universe currently is when it deals with the Infinity Stones, is that you give it a way to try to throw it back to the classics of, Mar of, of everything preceding Marvel 2, including Marvel superheroes, where this game is getting a lot of its inference from. This is going to be a fun ride to sit up and watch this happen. I'm like, I'm probably still going to go dark. I'm not going to be paying all oh, my stupid motherfuckers no attention, but I am going to be playing close attention and and this game and I will be getting very, very, very intimate as I try to sit up here and try to figure out what's what until somebody gives the word about what's really good. So, the TLDR of this whole video is the following. Is, you, is air dashing the universal mechanic? Is the, space tone, is, the space, is the space stone off the table given the game's quick switch mechanic? How does activation of stones work within the confines of this game? And how much of TVC, how much of TVC's legacy is going to be in this game that they're going to build off of? Because you have to assume at this point if it's two on two, you have to wonder, are they really going to go four button with it? Are they really going to go low, medium, high? Are they going to go low, medium, high? And a partner button, or will there be a stone activation button, or will you activate it with all four buttons like X Factor? I'm very, very, very unsure about all of these questions, but I am interested to understand where this game wishes to go. I think that's about this trailer and all I can glean from it. Is that this game looks amazing. And it's like this is the game and pre whatever the fuck you want to call this but this game is going to be amazing so this is everything that I could glean from this trailer that I've been on the mic for 15 minutes for a trailer that lasts a total of a minute and four so that really goes to tell you like how much thought went into this before I fucking hit record that should tell you that all the stuff I went and read about the Affinity Stones and shit I'm not I ain't watched a Marvel Cinematic movie and probably never will because I don't fucking care enough. 
I had to remember what I had to play a little bit of Marvel superhero for like five seconds to make sure that I understood how the Infinity Gems worked in that game. I had to sit up here and remember all my knowledge about Top Snuggle vs. Capcom and Ultimate Marvel to a lesser degree to try to put all of this together because that's how important it is to me to want to find out what's going on. It's going to be a million of these tomorrow, but I don't know if people are trying to get into this dirt tonight. So if I get in front of it, it don't even matter. I'm often to say something about being ahead of the curve. Fuck the curve. The curve can suck my dick. I do what I want to when I want to. Fuck what everybody else is doing. Because if I gave a fuck about what everybody else is doing, imagine where I'd be. Probably in a lot better state than this, but at least I can go look myself in the mirror when I get done, I guess. Regardless of all that, whatever the fuck that was. Enjoy this new treat we got, internet, please. Because I am. So, I'm finna go ahead. I'm going to get this trailer to you. I have a feeling we ain't quite done talking about this because Jay has some thoughts. So, you know, I'll give him. If he got if he got something he want to say, I'll get him on the mic and we'll talk about it, man. Yo, been dropping knowledge all day long. So, we talked about the PlayStation experience today. I got my Ruby in. We I talked about the history of the Versus series. And what else did I put out? And and we talked about the and me and Jay talked about our thoughts about Hero versus Alien. So we got a lot of stuff popping off, man. And it's like yo TLC tomorrow, man. So I got a lot more to say before it's all said and done. So with that being said, I am of course the one and the only the triple the G O D. And I'd like to thank you for joining me for another installment of Triple the Guy Speaks on it. With that, I'll have you guys next time, man. Peace out. <laughs>